97.9 FM. Yeah, good morning from Cubby and Christine. <laughs> Hour three of 14 hours for the kids. We need 75 bright lights before 9 a.m., 20 bucks, and you are a bright light, and we double it this hour. Uh, yes, because it is the Sala Power Hour, yeah. so we have a very generous donor who is doubling all our bright lights. Your $20 a month becomes $40 a month when you call us at 800-222-1067. What is the Sala Power Hour? What is Sala all about? I think we have someone here who can explain that to yes, us. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have uh, Alexandra here. And, you know, I see your last name here typed, right? Yeah. Normally, I try to be the cool radio guy going, I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, i got to be typed by with you. I don't know how to say your last name. And, Alexandra, you want us to and, give it a go? And, and you said sure. don't feel bad. A lot of people don't get your last name right. <laughs> right? I think you should give it a shot. Okay, so what I'm going to try. Uh, please welcome Alexandra Neophyte 2. Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> how do you say your Pass last name? Pass on to the next. No, you should give it a shot. Uh, I was going to say, it's probably, it's probably shorter than it really looks, like uh, Alexandra Neo. Neo Well, Neo is my dad's name, okay. so it's like Neo, but it's Neofitu. Oh, ah, Neofitu. Uh, Alexandra right. Neofitu. Yes, thank Alex. You so you can call me Alex. Th thank you, and thank you so much yeah, for being here course. today. This is a really important day because the focus yeah. is on Hassenfeld Children's Hospital and people like you who have been through the process, who have been through the hospital, yeah and have a story to share. And you're also giving back and making a big difference in other people's experience. Mm -hmm. I try. You uh, are, yeah. So tell us, tell us about it. Um, so you want me to tell you about the Sala, about my involvement? So I am um, a Sala family advisor, account, um, uh, uh, advisor. And what we do is we really help shape communications for families that are coming into the program. Um, we've been into the hospital for, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about my daughter later, but we've been through almost every floor of this hospital. We've been in the NICU, in the CCVCU, in the PICU, in the ER, and we really, what really stood out for us is how much families are put on first in the hospital. So I really wanted to give back and help shape communication. So we've helped do things from um, help design this hospital, and wow. really provide input to really... To Good pick job, by the way. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> it was all me. You did a beautiful job decorating. <laughs> you really did an amazing job. And to picking the PJs to what, you know, what fabric the, the kids are going to wear because it's important. And, you know, they every single detail the hospital takes care and they want to make sure that it's, it puts the kids first, it puts the families first, and we really try to make a difference in that way. Alexandra, or Alex, yeah. what was your experience at the hospital? You said you had your own situation here. Yes, yeah, so my daughter Zoe was diagnosed with a congenital heart defect when she was 20 weeks um, gestation. And it was, as you can imagine, it was devastating. Um, we Wait, 20 were weeks. Go, go 20 back, weeks. go back. 20 yeah. weeks, still in the womb. Still in the womb. Yes. And they diagnosed that. They diagnosed that. And they said um, that it, we they didn't know if she was going to survive. So they told us she was a girl and that they didn't know if she was going to make it. And we were at a different hospital at the time, but they referred us to the Hassenfeld Children's Hospital because of we and we were connected with the amazing pediatric cardiology care here. And they gave us so much hope. We named Zoe Zoe, which means life in Greek, because we wanted to give it a shot even before she was born. And then when we, uh, I ended up going into labor about at 36 weeks. So it was four weeks early. It was unexpected. And she was born at about five pounds. So she was a tiny little peanut. She, I think she fit in my husband's hand. Oh my gosh. She was tiny. And we didn't know exactly what she had. But after a few hours, and you can imagine, I was in shock. I had just given birth. There were 30 people in the room. And then they told us that if she didn't have surgery within the next 24 hours, she would not have made it. So Zoe's first day of life was right to the ER. I mean, the emergency right room pretty the, much. It was it Heart was surgery. incredible, and the night I remember the night before the surgery, the nurses at the CCVCU at the Hassenfeld Hospital they allowed us they, they she was all wired up she was getting prepped for surgery and they allowed us to hold her and they took, got out of the room we read her story I couldn't even get through the story because I was crying so much mm -hmm. my husband was reading her the story we held her in our arms she gave us all the time we needed they supported us they brought a social worker they asked us if we wanted to have any any uh, you know spiritual support. And then when the surgery was happening, they kept us updated constantly. Um, and then I think it took about five or six hours. And I remember pacing in the room, and I remember going up um, to the CCVCU because I couldn't wait anymore, and the nurse there was going to call me. And she said, she's fine. She made it out. And then I hugged her, and she just the fact that I knew, I saw the relief in her face, so I knew that she cared. I knew that they were not just another patient. So it was incredible to just see her there. And we ended up spending 
a few weeks here. Um, we came back because she had some complications. We spent a couple of weeks, but every time we came back, it just felt that everything was designed to make our experience as best as it could be, because it's stressful and you're lost and you feel alone and you're not, there are not a lot of people going through the same thing at the same time and you don't really have a lot of people to talk to. They don't understand but they were there for us and I remember having long conversations with nurses at 2 a.m. because they didn't, because I was there sleeping in a, mm. on a bed next to my daughter and they wanted, and they knew that I wanted to be more, you know, they wanted to have some kind of human contact right. so they would Talk have a conversation you. with me. Yeah. So yeah. that was amazing. Wow. And uh -huh. that's why the phone number 1-800-222-1067 is so important um, to make a $20 donation, which of course this hour up until, what time is it? It's quarter to nine until yes. 9 a.m. We're doubling that with the solid power hour. We we have we're trying to reach our goal of 75 bright lights before 9 a.m. We have 67 we can more do it. to go. So yeah, 20 bucks is all we need. Let's uh, light up the phones. 800-222-1067. Alex, your story. It's amazing. What is incredible? What is up with Zoe now? She's six years old. Six. She's in first grade. She started reading. She's incredible. She's into theater. She does musical theater. She dances all around. She has a little sister. She's four. Um, they fight like cats and dogs, but uh -huh. they also love each other <laughs> so much. All, all the stuff you wanted. Yes. All the stuff I wanted. You got She's, it. Nobody could ever know. When I tell her story, people are just amazed. Does and she know, by the way? She knows. She knows she has a special heart. Um, she it loves her doctors. We still come in for checkups every six months. We still have to get a lot of you know procedures and MRIs at the hospital. So this is sort of like a, she feels so comfortable here. She just walks through the door. It's not Everyone's a stressful like, hey, thing. Zoe. Hey Zoe, everybody <laughs> knows her name. Everybody understands her. There's always little prizes. She loves her doctor. She shows them video of her oh, performing. It's just an um, it, it feels like family. And before Zoe, I could not walk in a hospital. I was actually afraid of hospitals. Mm. And now every time I walk into this, I'm like, okay, this is, you That's know, I'm That's what I thought Tone. when I first came here. It's incredible. I mean, I mean it's a hospital, but it's kind of not almost. It's, it's not. Like you feel like you're sometimes in a theme park. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this wing ren right now is beautiful. For the Hassenfeld Children's Hospital, yes, as you said, they, they've spoken to the families and they've taken all of your suggestions yeah. into consideration and made the atmosphere absolutely beautiful and welcoming. So, yeah. What could be a very scary experience is less scary for the yes, child. Yeah. Absolutely, because it's it you know it's stressful and you don't nev you never want to be here with your child. Right. But if you have to be here, the fact that everybody's here to support you, that they look at you as the the parent is just as important right. for the care of the child as anyone else, and that's what really family centered care is, and that's what they put on first, and that's how we felt. So we wanted to make sure I can give back and. If, if anybody was going to come here, that they would get that same care and be able to have that same experience. So one more question for you. Why should Light FM listeners pick up their phone, 1-800-222-1067, call that number, and support Hassenfeld Children's Hospital? Because the, the work that is done here is amazing. The, they saved our daughter's life. She would not be here. She would not be six years old and crazy and a normal six-year-old child if we hadn't had this experience here. And the team of doctors that they put together, we have about six or seven specialists that followed Zoe, was in, and the communication in between them, being able to have everything at one place, being able to talk with each other and have a plan of care, that would have not, nothing would have gotten anywhere else. So the work that they do is life-saving for so many children ar around New York City and beyond because I know other kids come from other cities to yes. just to be here. No child so is turned away. Absolutely. Yes. So that it, it's so important. So being able to support it and be able to continue this great work, I think, is, is going to be, it's, it's crucial. You've said it more beautifully than anybody possibly could. Alex, please give us a call at 800-222-1067. Become a bright light right now, and you're going to have your gift matched mm -hmm. thanks to a very generous donor. So your $20 a month becomes $40 a month. We still are looking for 62 bright lights before 9 o'clock this morning. We have millions of people tuned in. We can do that, I think. I feel confident in that. 1-800-222-1067. Please call right now. Alex, again, thank you very much. Send our love to Zoe. I will. Thanks All for right. having me. And the whole family. Thank you. Light FM. 106.7. Light FM.